Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at using NVIDIA StyleGAN 2 ADA for PyTorch to get some really quality GAN face images. Now, previously we saw that we could use our own technology, our own custom-built neural network to generate GANs, but the faces didn't look particularly good. It takes a lot of compute power and a lot of clever algorithms to really get high quality faces like you see with StyleGAN. So we're gonna look at StyleGAN 2 ADA PyTorch, which is really the latest technology in this area. Okay, let's have a look at the code. So this is the module that there's a link to in the description. And I do put the note here, this module requires PyTorch. So most of this course that I teach you is in TensorFlow Keras. There's two parts, at least as of the recording of this video, that I do make use of PyTorch. That is for reinforcement learning and also for StyleGAN. This is mainly just because these two very important libraries, in this, in this case, StyleGAN, in the case of reinforcement learning, stable baselines, have made the switch to PyTorch. And really, the neural network is kind of below everything that you're doing, so it, you really almost don't, don't notice it. I am adding in more PyTorch components as optional directions in this course so that you can see some of the same technology with PyTorch. PyTorch is gaining a lot of momentum, and it's a very, especially in research, it's a very used technology or a framework for implementing deep learning. All the underlying underpinnings are the same thing. Even the pickle files that I created with the old version of StyleGAN before NVIDIA made the switch to PyTorch, the, the pickle files, the saved neural networks, can just be loaded right into PyTorch. So th the underlying technologies are all the same, essentially, between these. Now, you'll see with StyleGAN 2 ADA, there are all these very, very high quality faces that you can generate. These are not real people. They were generated by StyleGAN2 ADA. And by the way, the ADA on the end, that's um, augmented. Essentially, you see it here with the cat. So maybe there was just one picture of the cat in the original one. But as they train, they put a higher probability of augmentation happening. And augmentation is one of the big breakthroughs in computer vision in terms of augmenting the images, rotating them, doing other distortions on them so that you have additional training data. With When training these GANs, and I'll show you some of the GANs that I've trained from scratch. In this class, we're talking primarily just about generating GANs from networks that are already trained. To generate your own GANs, you need high-end GPU, and I mean, you can do it with Colab, but Colab Pro, really, but it's it, it takes a lot of compute. Most of the GANs that I generated were done on, on high-end GPUs that I let run four days generating these. But here you can see the images. They all look they all look quite realistic. There are some some things that will tip you off that you're not looking at a real image. Consider these. At first glance, these look very very realistic. But if you look at the background, that's usually a telltale sign that you're looking at a generated image. The background is kind of whimsical, kind of mysterious. You're not quite sure what you're what you're looking at. Also, things that are not the face will not look as, as good, like earrings. It has a hard time with earrings. Notice her earrings. Very rarely does a GAN create symmetric earrings. Also, the clothing. I mean, there's a button maybe there and it now granted i'm not the best at at always having um my my clothes neat prim and proper if you've watched my videos but um the collars will usually be a little uh, d disheveled for me that would look entirely normal i guess it does not know the difference between one face and two faces so some of the training data as good as nvidia did in curating it and and paying people to remove certain things some of them had multiple faces and you can see this, this guy has a twin that is appearing here, and it's extremely distorted. Similarly, hands. She has moved her hand up into the frame, and it's not looking so good. Hats. It's, 
It's hard to tell on hats. I mean, hats can be very bizarre, uh, especially in high fashion, but uh, usually hats will sort of blend into the hair like you're seeing here. Not real. And her, her neck is really, really slender. So looking at those, you can see another thing. If I were to produce a video of just going through all kinds of random faces, you would notice that their eyes are always in exactly the same spot. And by that, I mean the two eyes. Now their face and head can, can move around a bit, but the eyes are pegged to right here. And the reason that is, is more of a quirk in the way that NVIDIA trained these, is they used a feature detector to detect where the eyes were to crop. So they centered each of the pictures around the eyes because, you know, people are in all kinds of weird positions in, in Flickr, and these pictures all came from Flickr, the training data. So it's those are th some of the things that you will notice as you work through these kinds of images. Now, I want to actually show you how to generate some of these, so I'm going to go ahead and open this in Colab, because you've got to have a GPU to run this. Now, you could probably run this just fine without a GPU. It's for training, no way. But for generating them, potentially, because it, they, it generates very, very quickly. But this is software from NVIDIA, so they assume you have a GPU. It's just the way it works. And especially PyTorch. PyTorch, you kind of have to program it differently for a GPU versus a non-GPU. So a lot of PyTorch that you will see code does require a GPU, be just because the original researcher programmed it that way. Actually need to update that. I will uh, uh, remove that. We're actually not using TensorFlow 1.x. That was one of the problems with the old version before NVIDIA upgraded it. They had used a very old version of TensorFlow, but now they are using the latest PyTorch, at least as of the recording of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I do trust myself. I created this, this notebook anyway, and I'm going to do this so that I do have access to my G drive. You may want to do this as well, because if you generate some of these images, it, you, you'll probably want to save them. So I'm putting that into there, and it's no security breach that I'm letting you see that code. This is all you have to do to really install it. You have to clone it. PyTorch is installed by default in Colab. You do also need Ninja. Ninja's an add-in for PyTorch that this that NVIDIA made use of for this. Now, if you look at that, if you look at Stalgen 2 ADA PyTorch, you'll see the latest version here. We just cloned it right into our content on Collab is where you store all of your content. That's temporary. This gets blown away as soon as you exit Collab. So be aware of that. That's why we have to get it back each time. Now I'm going to generate some images. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use pre-trained faces code from NVIDIA, and we're going to generate seeds 6600 to 25. I'll explain that in a moment. So let's go ahead and run this. So these seeds, these are just random number seeds that will cause the random number to generate consistently random numbers across. So the way a GAN really works is you're generating the image from a 512 number vector. And that 512 number vector is giving you is each of those each of those numbers generates part of the of the image. So if you change one of them just slightly, it's going to change the image ever so slightly. That is how you do these kind of transitional images and videos videos actually that you are watching here as I as I go through this this part. I'm going to show you how to create that a video just like that of your of your own. Now this takes a moment for this to install everything that's needed. There's two and now it's there's two uh, kernels that Nvidia uses to make this go faster. Actually, since they have custom kernels, this would not work on a CPU. So I take I take that back what I said previously. There you would have to recode those, those kernels and that would not be fun. So here we have the images, they were generated. They are now sitting in my content results and I could basically copy them to my G drive if I wanted to. I'll show you another way to, to get to those. So if you look at that, you can see them there. 
And now if we run this section, if you get this error here, you'll see basically that StyleGAN2, not a directory, that just means that you didn't create the, the folder on your G drive. I just corrected that. So if I run this, now they copy there. So if I go to my G drive, you'll see that I have a project StyleGAN2. Let me refresh it and you should see the, the images that it generated. There they all are. So you can click on these, download them individually. These are the images that StyleGAN generates. Now I'm going to run this code, which basically just sets up some code so that we can change those seeds into the actual vectors because we want to modify those 512 number of vectors to, to do some of the things that we're going to do here. This is just a quick function to display an image. And this is a function that I wrote that uses the NVIDIA code to actually generate an image. Now, some of the things that you'll that you'll that you'll see in here too is we're dealing also with labels. I'm not going to really get into into labels in this video. I could certainly do a video on that. Usually you have the GAN that you're using, and we're using all pre-trained GANs here, has to have been trained for labels. So for example, say you trained your GAN on pictures of puppies and pictures of kitties, cats. If you don't put labels in there, it'll do quite good. It'll give you cats, it'll give you dogs, and it'll give you cats that look kind of like dogs and vice versa. You can label them so that you're telling it what class it is. And then you can request when it's being generated that to generate something more like a cat or like a dog. They have one actually in, in the NVIDIA StyleGAN page that is trained for this, and it's generating very low resolution images from the, from the CIFAR image set, if I remember right. Yeah, the CIFAR 10 one, if you've worked with this, these are, ten, these are fairly low resolution, 32 by 32 images that was used earlier in machine learning of 10 different types of, of, of image for the data set. So if you look at CIFAR, I forget what the 10 classes are for, for CIFAR. Airplanes, automobiles, birds, cats, deer, dogs. So this data set has these 10 classes all mixed in. And to get the best results, you created a labeled GAN and you can pick which of these that you want to generate. Otherwise, GANs are not too good without without that labeling of distinguishing between, between different things. I'll show you an example of a very broadly trained GAN when we get to that in this lecture. You can train pass in a truncation PSI, varying that will change the quality that you're getting. You can also introduce noise. I keep it constant. If you introduce noise, you'll see the hair and other small things change, small things. So it won't change into an entirely different person, but it will look almost like the hair is blowing in the wind if you generate a bunch, uh, if you set this to random instead of constant. And then the class index, I'm not really using that for this class, so I won't have that there. Let me run that. And then here you're going to pick which pre-trained one. I'm going to use the fish GAN. This is one of my own. I trained this, I trained this GAN. I used Flickr and got a whole bunch of fish images. And this is basically just showing you how you will load a pre-trained GAN. It's just a pickle file. I actually trained this one on the old TensorFlow version, so it shows you how compatible these are. And I'm going to generate random fish from these seeds from 1000 to 1003. And there's three random fish. And you can see they look really pretty, pretty good. If you go through a bunch of different ones, some of them are definitely not as good as others. I mean, this one has an eye here and a very long mouth. This does not have an eye. And this one has an eye here, but an unusual sort of nose. But they look, they look really very, very fish-like. You can generate quite a bit more if you put additional seeds in there. And you can see some of these look really, they're really very nice fish. You can see these fish really look pretty good. This one looks quite good, quite good here. And that's a bit abstract as is that one. Now you can vary the latent vector. The latent vector is that 512 number vector that we're generating that actually creates these. So I am basically going to, I'm going to use the FFHQ, so I'm going to use actual faces, and I'm going to run this code here. 
that I wrote. What this is doing is loading the faces so that I, I can use. Now I'm going to transist between seeds 1000, 1003, and 1001. Let me go ahead and run this just so that it's going. And what this does is I'm using 100 steps to get between 1000, 1003, 1001. So these individual seeds, if you go from seed 1000 to 1001, it's going to be a completely different looking person. But if you take that big vector of 512 numbers that that seed generated, then you're going to get the more gradual results. And right now I'm generating for each of these people, I'm transisting from 1000 to person 1003 back to person 1001. And you can see it's it takes it a little while to generate this. This is generating just a whole bunch of frames as I go through and gradually just sort of skew from one vector to another. You can see I basically get my vector one and two. I take the difference of the two vectors linear algebra style. I divide that difference by the number of steps, and that's the value that I keep using each time to, to, to be my step. So I'm adding that step vector, which is added to the original vector, slowly takes it to the, to the second vector. And this is almost done. Let's go ahead and fast forward. All right, it's done with that. And then I use something called FFmpeg to convert all those frames back into a video. And now we can download the video. It prepares it. And I'm going to go ahead and open the video. And there you can see the transition. I'm basically transisting between those, those key images that I picked. And you're able to see those, those people transist in, in real time. Now, you can train your own GANs. These are some GANs that I train. There's the fish GAN. I trained one on Minecraft as well, science fiction pictures. And then I wanted to try something really crazy. I took just a bunch of random Christmas holiday videos. I mean, there were lights, there were Christmas trees, there were Santa Clauses, all kinds of stuff. GANs don't do as well on that because there's nothing really to specialize on. So it, it creates some really wild sort of Christmassy, kind of nightmare before Christmassy images. And I give you links to all my free pre-trained GANs there if you want to generate any of your own Minecraft images or, or other things.